Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Amazon came by the other day, dropped a box full of goodies. Seems like Gear 300 is back in stock. A new oil filter. Now, if you need to replace an oil filter, or do you get... Did I say oil filter? Now, if you have a leaky oil pan, or if you need to replace an oil pan because it rusted out, or you're like me and you decided to slam your car on the ground, move out into the middle of the country and literally slam your oil pan on the road, this video is gonna be for you. I showed this in a previous video. I slammed the crap out of my oil pan. I was actually on the fence of replacing it and I came to my senses and decided I should replace it. And with it being spring already, I figured it's a good idea to go ahead and swap the oil pan. Now this is something I'm not looking forward to doing. I think it's gonna be a complete pain in the ass but it has to be done. Another thing is I was debating on putting a Killer Bee oil pan on since I do have the Killer Bee oil pickup and baffle, but being that I believe they're cast aluminum and I already slammed my car on the road within a month of living here, I decided let's just go back to an OEM style. I think that makes a little bit more sense. If I do decide in the future to do more power, then maybe I will swap it. But for now, OEM oil pan is the way to go. To start this off, it's honestly not too bad, I guess but my car already has the secondary air pump deleted. It's this big plastic black thing that's right here. It's gone. I don't have to worry about it. But what you'll need to do is if you do have it is remove it to be able to access that 10 mil right there for your oil stick right here. Uh, this has to be free and out of the way so you can do this. Uh, also, you're gonna wanna head and drain your oil. Tool wise, I don't think you're really gonna need much uh, like a 10 mil, 3 8 10 mil, probably a pry bar. I got a scraper tool from the dollar store. So hopefully that helps out. I'm gonna try my best to not remove the headers. I really don't want to remove them, but we will see. I guess enough talking to you guys. Let's just go ahead and let's get to it. Honestly, the beginning part should be pretty easy. I already know this is going to suck. Okay. You could really see from this angle how bad I smashed my oil pan. Yeah, brutal. The subframe took a little bit of a hit too. You can see the rock hanging out. Uh, but time for the fun part, which is removing all the 10 mil bolts that go around the oil pan. As you can see, I don't know how many there are, but what I do know is there's four in the back there that are really difficult to reach. And to help get yourself in there, you gotta remove the two 14 mil engine mount bolts that are on both sides of the engine, one there, and the other should be, should be right there. And then once you do that, you jack up the transmission. When you do it, do not do it from the oil pan. You can do it like right here. Take like a block of wood or something just to kind of spread the load, jack it up just a bit. And what that will do is just raise your engine and allow you to get in there a lot easier. I think I'm gonna go ahead remove those 14s, jack up the transmission, and then try to remove all these 10 mil bolts. If I can get this oil pan out today, I'll be very happy. That's the goal. It's a little difficult to see. I can just barely see them. Um, I don't think I could jack it up much more. Like I can see the one back there now. It doesn't want to focus, but it's right back there. Okay, let me get all these 10 mils out and hopefully we can remove the oil pan.
Last one. Honestly, the, the ones in the back weren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be. Uh, as long as you use like an extension with a wobble, like a 10 mil, a little short wobble. Uh, now to break the oil pan free. I've seen this method, I don't know how well it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try to take a crowbar and put it in between here and here and pry up, see if I can break it loose. Gonna fight with it for a bit, see whatever I can get to work. Oh, it's free. It's free. I did end up wedging a flathead screwdriver in between the motor mount and the oil pan. Just an FYI, if you don't care about it, you're gonna replace your oil pan, go ahead and do it. It's pretty easy, just choose up your motor mount a bit. Doesn't really bother me. Also destroys your oil pan, you cannot reuse it. Uh, if you are reusing your oil pan, remove the headers, it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, let's see if I can drop this thing down now. Uh, that should be interesting. Give me the extra little bit. Ah. Oh, baby. That's it. That's it. Ooh, look at that. Look at that killer bee oil pickup and baffle. Jeez. Yeah, I think sick. I have not seen that since I dropped it off to barn built. Man, it's such a shame you don't see it. There you go. Finally got it off. You guys can see we did do the killer bee oil pickup and the baffle. I do recommend upgrading that if you are ever removing your oil pan. The OEM ones are known to basically crack. Uh, they're like soldered on down here, I believe, and there's only one mount that holds it, whereas the Killer B one, it's all TIG welded. Uh, it has two mounts that help support it, and it's just less prone to cracking. Actually, I don't think these things can crack because they're so solid. Slam your car, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Man, that's a big rip right there. Happy to have that gone. So my original plan was to get a used one. I was told not to do that. So I looked into getting a new OEM one and the price isn't really that bad. Uh, but I was on the fence of getting a new OEM one. And the reason for that is because I've lived at the new location for about a month and I destroyed it within a month. So this is kind of me cheaping out. Uh, at the end of the day, I just see it as it's a piece of sheet metal that was pressed into a stamp and, and, and that's it. Uh, I don't know. If you don't like the idea of using a non-OEM one, that is fine. You know, that is fine. I'm going to try this one out, see how it works out. If you are interested in it and any other things I use in the video, like the oil or the oil filter and all that, I'll link it down in the description. Whatever. I'm going to compare the two either way. The choice is yours if you want OEM or aftermarket or if you want to upgrade to Killer B. All the power to you. Looking at the top view, they do look very similar. I honestly don't really see any differences. They look I, literally identical. Um, it looks like it came out of the same stamping press. I have no complaints. Even the bottom here, uh, it literally like identical. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, let's flip these over. But again, comparing the two, I honestly do not see anything really different. I don't know guys, choice is yours of what you want to do. It does come with an O-ring right here. Uh, honestly, it, it seems the same. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> choice is yours. Go with whichever oil pan you want to go with. And another thing, you'll see the sides. See how I was prying it up? Yeah, because I pried it up like that, I wouldn't reuse this oil pan. And I wasn't planning on reusing it anyways. But that method did destroy the sides, so I do recommend removing the headers if you're trying to save your oil pan. So I did notice a difference, and it has to do with the actual drain plugs. The OEM one's a 17, aftermarket's a 22. Not sure why they went with a 22. I'm going to end up stealing my 17 just because I'm used to using a 17. I'm only doing it out of convenience, but it's probably fine. Thread pitch is the same, so we can go ahead and throw that in. So the next part of this is I got to go around the entire edging of the original where, where basically the oil pan originally was and I got to clean up all the gasket as you can see like this right here is hanging off. All this has to come off. I just got myself a cheap little scraper. I'm going to go through just kind of scrape off everything lightly. Just go around. It might be easier to honestly just do like the blade on its own but eventually all this will come off. Surprise. It's another day. I never end up finishing a video in one sitting. It's always a multi-day thing. I don't know why, it just is. But I have gone ahead and I've cleaned as much as I can, I guess, for the mating surface for the oil pan.
that's the finished product. You guys can see it's looking as clean as I think I'll be able to get it. I've been going at it for a while and this is by far the worst part of it. So this is the new oil pan I showed it earlier. I am literally using everything from it except the drain plug right there. I went with the OEM one just because it's a 17 mil and I'm used to a 17 mil. I got this Permatex Ultra Gray gasket maker. It's, I think, what everyone uses, to be honest. I know there's a black one, too, but the gray one seems to be kind of like more like OEM spec. sucked this sucked to do especially the four bolts in the back you can't see it it was hard for me to see honestly I had to feel it if I did not jack up the transmission and unbolt the engine mounts I would have never gotten those bolts in and out back there I'm just gonna drop the transmission now so I got bolt the engine mounts back in I just want to show you guys quickly like how tight of a gap it is if you do not raise the engine because good you'll never get it never Yeah, I don't know if you guys could have cut. Oh, I would have never been able to get that out without raising the engine. Almost forgot the dipstick right there. A little bit of oil in the O-rings and it should slide right on. I'll go from the top, push it in, and she should be good. Yes, that is a Mazda oil filter on my STI. Underneath looks good as new, other than our battle scars down there. I'll probably throw some fluid film on that just to kind of help keep the rust down and not destroying underneath. Uh, but everything is bolted up and we should be good to go. Now the Permatex gasket maker I went with does mention to give it 24 hours to fully cure. Uh, you can probably get away with going earlier. You can probably get away honestly with like 12 hours, even maybe eight. I'm not going to do it and I'm not recommending you to do it, but if you were in a rush, you can probably get away with it. Obviously, it's still cold. The car's not on the road, so I'm going to let this cure for probably longer than 24 hours. Um, I'm really not in a rush to get oil in it, but I will do that. Don't worry. Everything else is good to go. Uh, and yes, I do use Mazda oil filters on my STI. I have done it in the past. I know what I just removed was the black, I think it's the JDM oil filter or the one that comes off the BRZ. I, I can't quite remember, but it's the black one that is basically shorter than the Mazda one, but a little bit like girthier, I guess you could say. Uh, those are good as well. They are good. It's just the Mazda one is easy for me to get. So I ordered it off of Amazon. I don't know, I'm hyped. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't an exciting video of like putting like on a killer bee oil pan, but nonetheless, it's still good to see that the repair is done and I don't have to worry about having a smashed up oil pan underneath my car. Next video, we are doing a transmission flush. We're changing the gear oil on the transmission and the rear diff, but that'll be in the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and take it easy.